We're here to change the game all over again. We need to get this right because our customers are counting on us to deliver and keep their families moving. Now we really have less than nine months to execute on a, a fantastic plan. TMMI is situated on 1,160 acres. We're building 1,700 cars a day here. We have to continually keep producing the 2019 model year, in addition to not only moving new tools in, new equipment in, and teaching everybody on the 2020 Highlander. So we need everybody all in. It's a little bit like climbing Mount Everest. Even if you've climbed it before, Every time you do it, it's different. To do it successfully and not die, you've got to be really well prepared. Does that look all right to you guys? You've got pretty much all of America watching. There is a ton of pressure. There's a lot of resources that go into it, a lot of money, there's a lot of big eyeballs, but we really want people to be able to remember that this is more than just a car. I want us to be able to move somebody to be cheering for the car, cheering for the brand, cheering for who we are. The other side of it is kind of like tears that we touch your heart enough that kind of makes you understand that we're deeper than just selling products. We're, we're part of your family. The devil's in the details and it's all details, right? So there's a lot of little things that we've got to do to confirm that we're ready to launch. The Highlander, it's super important to our lineup. I think it's, you know, it's become one of our volume vehicles. We're gonna sell about 250,000, right? So it's important because the fact that the competition in this segment, the segment grows and the competition is going after is really hard. So how we start today with the press conference, how we market it, as we train for it, I mean, this is a critical product. Oh, okay, on that sheet of paper that someone wrote me, it said automotive news. Let's see how it flows. Yeah. yeah. Well, okay. down there too. The other thing is at the beginning, I, t I, I talked to Jen, the teleprompter, at the beginning, um, we have a lot of dealers that are here. Yeah, we have, the, so I'm going to do that. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it very simple. So I just told her I will, I'll, I'll do a 20 second Wait lead in. Um, how much time we got? We go at 10 oh, after, 10. so it's like 11 minutes. Okay. All right, time to get it on. Okay. Thanks for being back here up in, near the front row. I can look at somebody and smile. Jack, Handsome right. fellows. Jack, how Thanks are for you? being here. Thank you very much. All right, it's really good. Some Highlanders. We're going to sell some Highlanders right now, baby. Please welcome Group Vice President and General Manager, Toyota Division, Toyota Motor North America. Jack Hollis. 19 years ago, right here in New York, we had a world premiere that changed the game. The 2001 Toyota Highlander was introduced and made its mark on the midsize SUV market. And we're here to change the game all over again. Check this out. The fourth generation design of this highly influential SUV sports a new chiseled look. The new model takes a dramatic design direction, combining a powerful SUV presence with sophisticated detailing. Smart key entry, 
LED headlamps, fog lamps, and eight-way power driver's seat, hands-free, power back door, premium projector headlamps, 12.3-inch touchscreen display, even the shape of the taillights and side mirrors contributes to the vehicle's stability as the air rushes by. So I want to thank you all for taking time here today. Have a great New York Auto Show, a great week, and happy Easter, everybody. Thanks. What's great is that people are in the U.S. will let us know what they want, and that's what we'll deliver. And I promise you that Toyota is prepared for whatever that's going to be. I want to give you options to drive. If you tell me I really want an electric car, then guess what we'll produce? Electric car. Expectations for Highlander are continued growth. You're going to see the growth because of the great product itself, because of the Highlander, and I think the all-new Highlander, uh, both Saiki-san, uh, Millie Marshall, and the whole team that's put together a wonderful product. No, we really have less than nine months to execute on a, a fantastic plan. We don't get to rest at all until about six to a months to a, a year after launch. And that's what it's about. TMMI uh, is situated on 1160 acres. We're building 1,700 cars a day here. We build the Sequoia, the Sienna, and the fabulous Highlander. We're the only producer of the Highlander for you know North America, South America. Uh, now we're going to be exporting to Europe and the Middle East, so it's it's huge. For us to prepare for a new model like this, we start you know three four years prior to SOP. So what we'll do is we'll form some pilot teams. The pilot teams will go work with the designers to understand what's changing in the vehicle. Our our responsibility from a pilot perspective is take what the designers uh, have interpreted as the customer demands and needs, what they're gonna change about the vehicle, and then interpret that into how do we need to prepare the shop. The challenge, and quite frankly, it's an opportunity for us, volume is good on SUVs. So we have to continually keep producing the 2019 model year, in addition to not only moving new tools in, new equipment in, and teaching everybody on the 2020 Highlander. So we need everybody all in. How frenzied does it get leaning up the line off? You know, it's, there's a, it, the devil's in the details and it's all details, right? So there's a lot of little things that we've got to do to confirm that we're ready to launch. It's an HV, it's gonna get a heat shield bracket. All the safety things, all the quality things, all the productivity things. How do we make sure we got the right spare parts? How do we make sure that we've got uh, the tools in place? How do we make sure that the, the team members have been trained? How do we confirm that we have all the right quality checks? There's, it's, it's pretty frenzied. If you pick both of them up, you're going to plug this one in, and then, then you're going to plug this one in, and that's going to save you about two, three seconds. We will make you an industrial athlete. We're not going to come in and you automatically go to the line and you sink or swim, you try to learn it. But anytime they need additional training, we take them offline and we put somebody else back on there. They may go back to the training room and do some functional skills for the new 2020 Highlander. There is a lot more pressure when you're out online. You have one shot to do it. So I wanna make sure I train the team member so they have that one shot to get it right. Up here, they're entitled to mess up as much as they want. Down there, they don't have that chance. Highlander all entered was 56.2 against the target of 43. For OR, blue was 97.5 and gold was 99.7. Woo! Four. Trial update, of course, we've completed all the trial builds. We've built 135 shell bodies and weld shop. Um, so there's a secondary process that's got to be added to the supplier. So and we'll in September, add. which is one month prior to that trial, we will train everybody on those changes. I'm excited. I know everybody's excited. Make sure you keep your teams excited because this is going to be the best launch in North America history.
you've got pretty much all of America watching. It's got to be amazing. And that creates a ton of pressure. It's something that we thrive on. I like working under pressure. You know, everybody has their own philosophy, whoever runs marketing. Mine was about two keywords: cheers, tears. But we really want people to be able to remember that this is more than just a car. I want us to be able to move somebody to be cheering for the car, cheering for the brand, cheering for who we are. The other side of it is kind of like tears, that we touch your heart enough that kind of makes you understand that we're deeper than just selling products. We're, we're part of your family. When you buy a Toyota, when you lease a Toyota, when you're part of the Toyota family, you represent something to us that's more than just someone that just purchased a car or truck. You talk about a Highlander that's selling about 250000 in a segment that has something like 24 competitors now. Think about that. They're all very similar. So the challenge for Ed in this is how do you separate yourself even more from the competition? It's an extremely, extremely crowded landscape. The Detroit guys have decided that they're gonna get out of the car business. So they're focusing all their attention on trucks and SUVs. So that means they're putting a lot of money and a lot of resources into the midsize SUV segment because that's gonna be potentially one of the, their volume leaders, and that's exactly where Highlander is going to. So this is probably one of the most difficult launches that we're gonna have as a company, and so we need to make sure that whatever creative that we come up with is gonna definitely resonate, but it's also gonna be true to what we are as Toyota. The Go Highlander will be really interesting to see how we uh, embed that through the big game concept. We have a process within the company for development that's called T-squared or Total Toyota, we have four major agencies, Saatchi, Burrell, Coneal, and Intertrend. They represent general market, the African-American market, the Hispanic market, and the Asian market. It's really a collaborative effort. It's led in many cases by Saatchi, but the creative process actually is a collaborative amongst these four agencies. It all starts with inspiration, being observant, you know, the things you read, the movies you see, the music you listen to the way you see the world around you, and then translating that into a, a relevant story that makes sense for what you're selling and who you're selling to. It's interesting because we found that the personalities of mid-size SUV drivers and owners uh, is really different from what we've seen in the past 10 years. So our target or our Highlander um, owner is gonna be younger, they're gonna put more emphasis on their vehicle reflecting their personality. It's understanding how one key truth or human insight can cross all of those different ethnicities um, and coming up with an idea that emotionally connects people on that human insight. So it's not just, you know, driving up in a mom mobile or driving up in a soccer dad SUV. Um, they want something that says, hey, I've arrived. To put an ad into the big game is unlike anything that we do within the company because the entire world is watching and also the entire world is extremely critical of everything that you do. It's a difficult challenge, but I think the team, as well as working with, with Saatchi and Saatchi and as well as all of our TDAs, it'll, it'll work. All right, so we just got out of leadership. It was a tough meeting, a lot of questions, a lot of scrutiny, but I think we're gonna get through it. I think we're gonna be all right. We just got a lot of work to do. Um, Hope you guys don't have plans for the weekend. <sighs> Sorry. The way we get to here is a long road. There's a lot riding on it. You know, we've, uh, we're gonna be featured on the biggest stage in the world. And this is the Highlander launch. It's, it's the biggest, most important launch for 2020. So the stakes are very high and the pressure is very high and the expectations are very high. The opportunity for creativity and emotion is significant. Um, the opportunity for Toyota, when you think about the role SUVs play in the lineup, equally significant. So I think SUVs have kind of changed the game in the automotive industry in the last five to 10 years. For Toyota, Highlander's a huge opportunity.
at the risk of sounding dramatic, it's a, it's it's a little bit like climbing Mount Everest. Even if you've climbed it before, every time you do it, it's different because the weather changes, the conditions change, the mountain changes, you change. And to do it successfully and not die, you've got to be really well prepared. You've got to be a team. You don't. You never. You would never want to do something that massive on your own. So you've got to be surrounded by the right people. It's, it's hours and days and weeks and months and nonstop writing. This is this is just a piece of old ideas, you know, old scripts, old storyboards, old ideas that didn't make the cut. What you see on the board looks really simple. It's like, wait a minute, all that work to get to this? But that's what it takes. It takes a pile like this to get to one idea that is the one. It's making people feel in a way that they don't normally experience on behalf of a big hunk of sheet metal that gives them meaning. Our job is to bring that to life, create that sense of excitement, The reason that this, this spot was chosen for the game is, is, I mean, it's pretty clear just to look at it. The Highlander is the hero. The, the, the story wouldn't work without the Highlander. And the Highlander driver is, is the other hero in this story. She goes around picking, picking up people in, in bad situations. And they're always stunned when they get inside the Highlander how nice it is in there even when there's a, an, a, an alien on the loose outside the vehicle. Inside it's always calm, it's peaceful, it's wonderful, it's elevated. It's based on a, a strategic human insight. The people that drive Highlanders are typically, the, they're the, we call them the glue people. They're the people that bring groups together. They're, the, they're, they're like the ones that make things happen. And this story taps right into that. What are the consequences of screwing up on this particular spot? <laughs> the consequences are, are grim. <laughs> we can't, this is, this is, failure is not an option. Today we're here at the T3, which is Train the Trainer at the North American headquarters in Plano, Texas. Today we're studying the 2020 Toyota Highlander. Learning about the engine, technology, body, the way the car drives, aerodynamics, uh, some of the ergonomics, everything that a sales consultant should know to help them sell the car better. Not only is our car better, but our brand is better. Our reputation and the value we bring to every customer that walks out of our door with a car is going to be higher quality. T3 really trickles down to the customer because the customer will walk into a Toyota store and be greeted by a salesperson that really knows what they're talking about. I like automatic. Yeah. Power everything. So today I'm excited about getting in this car. Look at that dash. That's a sick dash, huh? Sitting in it, appreciating the new seats, the new leather. On the inside of the car is one thing, but I'm also excited about driving the car as well. It's on the new TNGA platform. The TNJ platform has really made this car stand out a little bit. The wheelbase has been extended slightly so. You've got larger wheels, which will all give it a better drive. The styling of the car is exactly what it needed. Nice, aggressive, sporty, and classic at the same time. I'd say Toyota hit it out of the park. We're here in San Antonio, Texas for the National Press Preview, or what we call the NPP, for the 2020 Highlander and Highlander Hybrid. A National Press Preview is an opportunity for journalists from around the country and in fact around the world to get into the new Highlander for the very first time. Product Communications role in running this event is really to just get all the information out to media and make sure they have everything they need from press releases to spec information, photos and b-roll so they can get the message out to the customers. As a mom, a lot of people ask me, what are the best three-row vehicles out there? 
and I really like the Toyota Highlander. They drive the vehicles, we do a presentation, we give them all of the background on it so that they can write stories and help us get the word out about the great features of the new Highlander. So I want to tell the story of how this vehicle can match your lifestyle and in different ways. So if you think about how people consume media, so it's our job to try to get the word out as broadly as possible so that people are aware of and will purchase the 2020 Highlander. Obviously, I had a lot of history at Indiana. I knew the people, uh, so it's a natural fit for me to be able to come back as the president, but it is, it's an extreme honor and extreme responsibility that I don't take lightly. I think, you know, Millie put us on the path for success. You know, she really, she allowed us to, to uh, share our dreams and our ambitions on what we wanted the launch to look like. So we set the pathway. She helped guide us and challenged us in areas that she felt weren't strong enough and we had to respond to those things. I think she did a great job. So Millie and me are very good friends. Millie gave me plenty of advice. Uh, we talked to each other all the time. We were able to spend a lot of time together talking about what she saw as the final, final push that needed to happen. And then I took that uh, really just and moved with it after she left. We brought different skill sets from weld, we, plastic shop, paint shop, uh, so other NAMCs with different skill sets came to uh, Indiana to really support each shop to, for that final preparation. Yeah, it was, there were some times there when we were looking at it going, wow, this is a, a huge hill to climb. And, I don't know if we're going to make it, but I think that was what was really cool was just how every time we would call for help, somebody would show up, whether it be people from the other plants, whether it be Canada, whether it be Texas, Kentucky, Mississippi. There was probably well over 200 people that were brought in from all over the world. We brought in engineers, we brought in maintenance folks, we brought in production team members and team leaders, you know, to help out with some of the changeover activity and some of the training that we had to do. You know, I went into every shop, spent a lot, a lot of time on the floor, talking to the team members, listening to their concerns, and what, what, did, they, what did they need here at the final end to be, to be able to make them successful. And through just listening and spending, you know, hours and hours on the floor, I could understand uh, how far they'd come, but what we needed to really just get to the final point. Leah never stopped being team of mine. She was one of the first people to greet me when I moved to Hobstadt, right? So, um, her family has adopted me and my family and we're tight. So, you know, I'd see her at church on the weekends or see her in, in town over the weekends when she would come home. And definitely I could tell that there was, there was always a team of my spirit within her. I'm from right here in Hopstad, Indiana, uh, born and raised. So where Hopstad's located is basically about 10 miles um, south of the plant. Uh, really, it takes me 10 minutes to get to work. So growing up in this area, uh, everybody knew everybody. And, you know, we would go out, ride our bikes all day long, come back for lunch. My dad started a restaurant here in Hopstad named Hop Steakhouse back in 1973. I first started working there when I was like third grade, washing dishes by hands. All my kids worked there. Every, all four of them have worked there. My dad passed away, it'll be three years this April. It was basically three months after I moved to West Virginia, he passed away. I feel like it was my second home, but it, it's definitely not uh, like here in Indiana because for me, I think home is where family is. Please just stay still so I can... Many people come up to me and tell me how proud my dad would have been. And I know, I know he knows. I know he's watching. But I can't bear to lose the way your water soothes. I know it's all in my mind. 
Turn the anchor down inside And when everything's always changing I want you to stay the same Will you be my little piece of home? It's just a real honor for us to know that as Toyota gets stronger, Indiana gets stronger. As Indiana gets stronger, Toyota gets stronger. And that is a real source of pride for Hoosiers of all stripes. Nothing gives me more pleasure than to come to one of our plants and launch a new vehicle because you see the culmination of all the hard work and effort of each team member coming together to make a great vehicle like this Highlander. A lot goes into building a great vehicle, but we didn't just put in a lot of effort. We put everything we had into making sure that we delivered the best new Highlander ever for our customers. Over the past several years, the Indiana team put tens of thousands of hours into bringing this product to life. And on top of that, our team members put hours into training months before we even touched the first travel vehicle. All that work, all the new investments, were done for one reason, our customers. You see today, it's more than just a vehicle. It's about what a vehicle can do. $1.3 billion investment in this plant in the last two years. More than 7,000 jobs that will be here years from now. And a million dollar program we believe will be transformative for our community, and for generations to come. This is what a vehicle can do. We added another 150 more jobs for a total of 550 new jobs created as a result of this project. Today, our employment at this plant is the highest it has ever been at more than 7,000 team members. I like to say we're the second largest city in Gibson County. We can build more Highlanders than ever before to meet the demand of our loyal customers. And our total plan investment since 1996, the groundbreaking, now exceeds $5 billion. That's amazing. The jobs that we're offering, their careers, their lifelong careers. And it is amazing to see the generation after generation are coming through that door since when we opened in 1997. What do you owe to these team members? I owe them the fact that they will have job security and a long career to do whatever they feel they want to do. I owe them uh, the opportunity to be able to spread their wings and show what they can do. Basically, the, the ultimate commercial you can do in the US is something for the game. And everyone's eyes are on that game, and everyone has an expectation of those commercials. And when you're a director, you want to have an audience, and that's probably one of the biggest audiences you're ever going to get. We're on day four of our four-day shoot. So this is a night shoot. Last night was a night shoot. So we'll probably wrap around 
2.30 or 3 o'clock this morning. The idea behind this commercial is really making Highlander the hero. Maybe we'll take it a little further than we typically do for Toyota um, and push it to be a little more edgy. Well, first of all, it's a great script. Something that feels like a, a bunch of Hollywood movies all rolled into one. And then it had drama, explosions, aliens, all sorts of manner of things that directors love to muck around with. When crises are about to happen, the Highlander comes in and really helps rescue them from their situation and then brings humor and lightness uh, to that situation. And action. The game, it's the biggest stage to introduce Highlander. Basically, my job is to forget about it being for the game. Of course, that's part of it, but just direct it as best it can be. That was pretty damn good. Pretty damn good, I'll take that. Uh, one more. I know, I know we're going to be in downtown in the rain. You sure that's a mouth? You sure that's a mouth? And then they scream. Sure I think they don't. I think what they do on that line is we can do a scream. Uh huh. But I think on that one, the scientists should ponder like maybe it is. You know, <laughs> that's funny. Or maybe it isn't. There's great energy on set and, uh, we're just getting a lot done in four days. And we're ahead of schedule by four minutes. So, you know, you want to attract people's attention. You want to make them laugh. Basically, you want to entertain them while disarming them and allowing them to fall in love with Highlander and Toyota. So we find that white typically doesn't highlight all the character lines. So when you look at the new Highlander, you can see sort of that chiseled side that color picks it up better than most colors that we have in the palette. It's quite a big production, obviously. Uh, we've got about 100 crew, probably about 80 cast, including the extras. So, you know, that automatically gives it a lot of scale. As far as the shoot goes, I'm having a lot of fun, which is always good. Everyone seems to be happy with the pictures. That's always a positive sign. Does that look all right to you guys? Usually, yep. the edit's where it really comes together. And I think we have all the material for that, but that'll be truly when I I can say how well it's gone. From my perspective, I think it's going to be cinematic and glorious and funny. That's what, like, I'm not setting the bar high at all. <laughs> but that's what I think it's going to be. The point of this meeting is to present the first rough cut. This is his first time seeing it, you know, after we shot it. What happens today will kind of determine how the rest of the year goes. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully Ed doesn't have much to say. Hopefully he gives us a thumbs up and says, bring it on home. There is a ton of pressure around the game every year. There's a lot of resources that go into it, a lot of money. There's a lot of big eyeballs, both internally and externally. It's pretty intense. Uh, yeah. There's been so much work leading up to this. You know, Highlander is a, a cornerstone of our future and continues to grow, 245,000 sales. You see the big touch screen in the front. When we first started talking about this ad, one of the big things that I liked about it was bringing sarcasm into it and putting a smile on everybody's face. It was a tricky balance getting the, you know, the beautiful epic film to make it feel like a movie trailer and also capturing the the comedic timing and just sit back and okay let's do it. it we'll uh we'll watch it a couple of times I got room. Pop in. Okay. the reaction that i have to it is is that i'm really happy awesome good yeah thank congratulations you. thanks Ed. before this meeting i felt very anxious and now i feel very relieved happy uh energized when you're talking about the amount of investment in this there's always that apprehension of, are people actually going to like it? We launched it, so the car is out there. So far, from a sales perspective, the dealers, the regions are killing it. But on the marketing side, we've already seen very positive results. When Spot went live on Saturday. I started looking at the comments, all really positive, but when the spot hit in that fourth quarter, we saw thousands and thousands of people immediately go to toyota.com. That was our goal, and we got the results that we were looking for. You know, if you go back to the beginning, we've been on this for two years now. Someone threw it out in a meeting the other day that 
we're on day 660 something and we're just finally coming to the end you think the the spot that ran on the big game was it it's like okay now you can now you can breathe easy but that was just the first uh, the first piece of communication that went out the rest of the campaign follows right behind it so there was still a lot of work to be done after after the game was over now that the campaign's in full swing i think uh Everyone, including myself, is in a really, really good place. I think the reaction to the campaign from the dealers has been fantastic. The reaction from the, to the product from the dealers, from the media, has also been really, really strong. And I think we've got a, the ultimate, uh, ultimate sign is for when uh, people call or people write and tell you that not only do they love the product, but they like the message that you're communicating. When I think about and reflect on this project, I really think about the people and how we all came together and brought our best talents and experiences together to create a really unique, incredible spot. It starts with product planning. It moves down into our vehicle marketing people. It's the folks that we that work over in media that decide exactly how we're gonna amplify the message. It's the people that work in the sales department with regard to getting people ready, getting salespeople ready, getting the regional people ready, it's the people in Corpcom that get together and, and prepare with the media and talk to the media and try to amp up why this is the best vehicle that is going to be in that segment and why they should write positively about it. So it's an unbelievable, huge team effort for the entire organization. It's been an emotional roller coaster, a physical roller coaster where, you know, the crazy ups and downs. And when you look at the work, it has that kind of roller coaster feel to it, too, you know, with the going from drama to comedy and back and forth. And it's just, you know, we tried to make it a fun ride for people. But in the end, you get off safe and sound with a big smile on your face, and that's what we were trying to do. Well, my father was the founder in 1968. He, he was, got in the car business and, uh, with his great uncle. And, well, his philosophy was he always uh, wanted to take care of the customer, make sure they were happy. He was a hands-on type person. He always got involved with every transaction with, with the customer. And uh, he uh, was, was always there from bell to bell to make sure everybody was taking care of business. This has always been a family-owned dealership. We have customers that have, you know, bought their first cars back in the 70s that still, you know, have their kids and their uh, grandchildren buying cars from us now. I'm not sure if it's typical to have customers that have been around that long, um, but I know when you become a, a staple in a city, uh, it just it naturally evolves that way, where you've got people coming back time after time. We get a lot of, of spouses coming in to buy things during holidays, on Valentine's Day especially. We're putting bows on cars um, so they can get a picture by it. Being able to be involved in that experience with a customer, uh, it's really heart touching, um, especially with the reaction that you see. And know that you did everything to make, to make them happy, and then you see the outcome, the end result. Words can't really express how it feels. It started off with she talked about she was wanting a Highlander. She saw this moon dust color. I didn't even know what moon dust was at the time. <laughs> Doug had called me and said that Lisa uh, has been online and she really wants uh, the new Highlander, limited platinum, all the bells and whistles. What is the possibility of getting one in moon dust? So that was the, ch the challenge because there was only two of them out there and then none of them were coming to me. Uh, so I had to reach out to a dealership in Arkansas that was willing to trade that car for me. I just wanted something that we could go with our family, you know, go uh, to church or, you know, just go anywhere with our family, go on vacations, and we just didn't have that. So that's what I wanted. And then, of course, it has all the backup sensors and the front sensors. You've probably that. done your research. <laughs> hey, you said you wanted everything, you know. It's got everything. There it is. <laughs> oh my gosh. Is that it? Yes. <laughs>
Is that the right color? <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Oh my God. Can I open it? Yeah, it's your car. Happy Valentine's Day. Oh, thank you. <laughs> we need to get this right because our customers are counting on us, as they always are, to deliver and keep their families moving. We're deeper than just selling products. We're, we're part of your family. We put everything we had into making sure that we delivered the best new Highlander ever for our customers. I love it, Doug. I've wanted this for a long time. <laughs> Please just stay still so I can trace the lines. I know I've already done it a million times, but I can't bear to lose the way your water soothes. I know it's all in my mind, turn the anchor down inside. And when everything's always changing, I want you to stay the same Will you be my little piece of home Carry 